Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Thursday, the 14th of March, and um, we, we are thankful to God for giving us another day to worship Him, to serve Him, to pray. Pray for each other, pray for the world in which we live. So let's, let's pray as we gather this morning. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness, according to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O Lord, God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. <clears throat> As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth and in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy. For you are God most high. You are full of compassion, long suffering and very merciful. And you relent at human suffering. O oh God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. But now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O oh God, I have sinned. 
and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise and your glory is forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Amen. Let's go to our psalm. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 86. Psalm 86. This is a prayer of David. <clears throat> Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. For you are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord. For I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart, that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O oh God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God. Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength on behalf of your servant. Save me, because I serve you, just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And the prayer, God of mercy, who in your great love drew your son from the depths of the pit, bring your people from death to life, that we may rejoice in your compassion and praise you now forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, so, pull out a few strands from this prayer of David. Um, there's a famous verse here, teach me, um, te give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. It's great, great verse, isn't it? 
Give me an undivided heart, a heart that is steadfast, a heart that is focused on you, a heart that is not that 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 is that, that is not divided between allegiances. Give me a heart that is so focused on you, God, that I may fear your name, that I may reverence your name, that I may regard you as central, as my primary purpose in life. Give me an undivided heart. There's a prayer for us today. That's a prayer. An, heart, an undivided heart. A heart that is not, that, that doesn't divide our allegiances. We only have one allegiance and that is God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Um, give me a sign of your goodness, verse 17. Um, what is the sign of God's goodness to us? The cross. The cross is the sign of God's goodness to us. I mean, what else would we need? The cross is a sign of God's love and God's grace to sinners. There's nothing else we need but that, sisters and brothers. If if ever you, you, you doubt the goodness of God, look to the cross. That is it. Look to the cross. There is nothing else that God can do to show us how much he loves us than the cross of Jesus Christ. So give me a sign of your goodness. That sign is the cross of Jesus Christ. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> Let's um, answer the collect for today. The collect uh, is is for the fourth uh, fourth week of Lent. Merciful Lord, absolve your people from all their offenses, that through your bountiful goodness we may all be delivered from the chains of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Savior. Amen. All right, so um, let's go forward to our first Old Testament reading, which, uh, of course, we are in Exodus. Exodus chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 27. So literally we are reading from Exodus 4, 27 to all the way to chapter 6 and verse 1. So let's read. Exodus 4, verse 27. Now the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness and meet Moses. So Aaron went and met Moses at the mountain of God, and he embraced him. Moses then told Aaron everything the Lord had commanded him to say. <clears throat> and he told him about the miraculous signs the Lord had commanded him to perform. Then Moses and Aaron returned to Egypt and called all the elders of Israel together. Aaron told them everything the Lord had told Moses. And Moses performed the miraculous signs as they watched. Then the people of Israel were convinced that the Lord had sent Moses and Aaron. When they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had, the, and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. After this presentation to Israel's leaders, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, let my people go so they may hold a festival in my honor in the wilderness. Is that so? retorted Pharaoh. And who is the Lord? Why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. 
But Aaron and Moses persisted. The God of the Hebrews has met with us, they declared. So let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness so we can offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. If we don't, he will kill us with a plague or with a sword. Pharaoh replied, Moses and Aaron, why are you distracting the people from their tasks? Get back to work. Look. There are many of your people in the land, and you are stopping them from their work. The same day, Pharaoh sent this order to the Egyptian slave drivers and the Israelite foremen. Do not supply any more straw for making bricks. Make the people get it themselves, but still require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That's why they are crying out. Let's go and offer sacrifices to our God. Load them down with more work. Make them sweat. That will teach them to listen to lies. So the slave drivers and foremen went out and told the people, This is what Pharaoh says. I will not provide any more straw for you. Go and get it yourselves. Find it wherever you can. But you must produce just as many bricks as before. So the people scattered throughout the land of Egypt in search of stubble to use as straw. Meanwhile, the Egyptian slave drivers continued to punish hard, to push hard. Meet your daily quota of bricks, just as you did when we provided you with straw, they demanded. Then they whipped the Israelite foremen they had put in charge of the work crews. Why haven't you met your quotas either yesterday or today, they demanded. So the Israelite foremen went to Pharaoh and pleaded with him. Please don't treat your servants like this, they begged. We, ha we are given no straw, but the slave drivers still demand, make bricks. We are being beaten, but it isn't our fault. Your own people are to blame. But Pharaoh shouted, you're just lazy, lazy. That's why you're saying, let, let us go and offer sacrifices to the Lord. Now get back to work. No straw will be given to you, but you must still produce the full quota of bricks. The Israelite foremen could see that they were in serious trouble when they were told, you must not reduce the number of bricks you make each day. As they left Pharaoh's court, they confronted Moses and Aaron, who were waiting outside for them. The four men said to them, May the Lord judge and punish you for making us stink before Pharaoh and his officials. You have put a sword into their hands, an excuse to kill us. Then Moses went back to the Lord and protested, why have you brought all this trouble on your own people, Lord? Why did you send me? Ever since I came to Pharaoh as your spokesman, he has been even more brutal to your people, and you have done nothing to rescue them. Then the Lord told Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. When he feels the force of my strong hand, he will let the people go. In fact, he will force them to leave this land. <laughs> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In other words, God is saying to Moses, you haven't seen nothing yet. Um, this is just the beginning of pain for Pharaoh. Yes, it is painful for the people in the short run, but in the long run, the pain will be Pharaoh's, not the people's. So be patient, Moses. Just chill. You know, the people are, are suffering, yes. Their suffering has increased, yes. But that is only a short-term measure. The long-term is going to be Pharaoh's suffering, not the people of Israel. And so it is that, it's that perspective that God is getting Moses to see there is a bigger perspective on this Moses 
And it's always the same with all of our suffering, sisters and brothers. There is always a bigger perspective. The, the short term is what matters to us, of course. Because if we are suffering, if we are going through desperate situations at the moment, we cry out to God and we, like the Israelites, we want somebody to blame and so forth. And why, God, aren't you answering my prayer? Why am I going through this, etc., etc.? And we, and we, we go through all that. And of course, we, it's understandable. But God wants us, indeed, to get a, a more bigger picture of our problems. The situation we are facing today is not insurmountable. There's nothing impossible with the Lord and God will rescue you. God will rescue us indeed. But we need to, we need patience. We need faith. We need trust. And, 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 and we need to simply believe that God is a God who rescues his people from, from their wickedness, from their cruelty, from their suffering, from their pain, from their sin. That's what Moses is being taught in this first encounter with Pharaoh. Moses is being taught that God, God doesn't work the same way we expect him to work. Yes, God did not prepare Moses for what Pharaoh did. God, it didn't take God by surprise. God knew that that's Pharaoh. That's how Pharaoh works. But God wants Moses to, to, to understand that the way he works is going to be different. And so the, this is his first lesson in God's timing, God's patience, God's way of doing things. Very different. So be patient, Moses, because Pharaoh is going to suffer more than the people are suffering. All right, we move on <clears throat> to Hebrews chapter 10. So Hebrews chapter 10 and we are reading from verse 9 to 25. Hebrews 10, 9 to 25. Just a <clears throat> right, Hebrews 10 from verse 19. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and living way, a life-giving way, through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest, who rules over God's house. Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now, that the day of his return is drawing near. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, on the basis of the argument that the writer of Hebrews has been making about the, the fact that the old uh, sacrificial system is no longer because that all of that was a shadow of Christ. The fullness is in Christ. Christ is a real sacrifice. Christ is a the full and complete and perfect sacrifice. So on that basis, he says, now we can boldly enter God's holy place. Before there was a curtain that separate the people from God. And only once a year, the high priest could, could go into that most holy place. Now Jesus has made the way, 
for open access through his blood to the most holy place. Now we can boldly enter into God's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus, he says. So by his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. You know, I think I think it's Matthew, one of the gospel writers, tells us that that when Jesus was crucified, the, the curtain in the temple, the curtain that separates the holy place from the most holy place was ripped in two from top to bottom. From the top down, it was completely, was ripped open to show that the way is open. And God is the one who ripped it from top to bottom, not from bottom up, but from top down. It's to indicate that God now opened the access into his presence. And now we, we can come boldly into the presence of God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. His death has opened the way for us. And he says, now, what is it? There is, the, 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 we, we are required uh, to do certain things, he says. There, what, what I call the lettuces of Hebrew. Let us, let us, verse 22, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere heart, fully trusting him. So we don't need to hesitate. We don't need to stand back. We don't need to worry, fret, or be anxious. We now have the privilege to go right in. Let us enter into the presence of God with sincere hearts, trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. And then he says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. Let us go in. Let us hold tightly. Hold tightly to the hope that you affirm. Don't allow anything to, to take away that hope from you. Um, he says, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. God has made a promise to us. And that promise we must hold on to. It's our hope, that blessed hope, that one day we will see the face of God and live. You know, this, the scriptures tell us that no one can see God's face and live. And yet, one day, the promise is that we will see the face of God and live. And in fact, as somebody says, we won't truly live until we see the face of God. And so, so, so let us hold tightly to that, that hope. Let us hold on to it. Don't let anything take that hope away. And then he says in verse 24, let us think of ways to motivate one another to love. Let us find ways now in our present context to motivate one another so that we can show acts of love and kindness to each other. Let us, let us use our time to motivate one another, to encourage one another, to love one another. And let us, the final let us in verse 25, let us not neglect our meeting together as some do. Let us gather together. Let us not forsake coming together. He's talking about the church, of course, and he's he said there are some people who don't come to church, some people who have stayed away. He said, but all of this, all that Christ has done for us uh, 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 is to teach us, is to teach us that we must gather together. We must not stop meeting together as some do, but encourage one another, especially now that we know that the coming of the Lord is near. Now, when he wrote this 2,000 years ago, the coming of the Lord was near then, and the coming of the Lord is even nearer now. So there is no time to play church, is what he's saying. And now is the time to get serious about our faith, to, get, to, 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 to focus on our life together as a community, and meet together to encourage one another, to build up one another, to strengthen one another, in the faith. Let us do these things. Why are we to do these lettuces? Because Jesus Christ through his death has opened a way into the presence of God for us and now we have the privilege of entering into God's presence. Therefore, let us hold firmly to the hope 
Let us stir one another on, motivate one another in, 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 with love and kindness. Let us not stop meeting together. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Let us pray. <laughs> Another let us. <clears throat> oh, Father, we thank you indeed for the blood of Christ. We thank you for the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death has made a way a life-giving way into your presence for us. And so, Lord, we thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the price you paid, Lord Jesus, for our sin. And through the death, through your death, through your cross, you, you tore wide the curtain so that we can enter into God's presence without fear, without intimidation, with boldness, with confidence, not in our strength, not in ourselves, but through your blood, through your sacrifice for us, in your name indeed. And so, Lord, we pray that, that this truth will transform our relationships so that we will motivate, stir one, one another, uh, towards doing good to that we will hold fast to the hope of your promise that one day we will see your face and let us lord help us we pray never to give up meeting together as your community as your people but to continue to be the church that you have called us to be to stir one another on to motivate one another to build up one another as we wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, make us this kind of people, we pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Lord, we continue to pray for the world in which we live. We pray. We pray for the, for the people who are suffering in Gaza, in Israel, for this conflict that is raging in that holy land. We have mercy on those people, we pray. Bring an end to the war. Bring an end to the fighting, Lord. Raise up peacemakers, Lord, who will broker peace between the war and factions. Lord, we pray. Indeed, we pray this for Ukraine. We pray for Sudan and wherever else there is conflict and violence in our world. Lord, we pray. We ask for your intervention. And we pray, Lord, for peacemakers, for those who, uh, those whom you have raised up to make peace between the, 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 the ones fighting. Lord, bring peace to the Holy Land. Bring peace to Ukraine. Bring peace to Sudan. And Lord, we pray for Haiti and the unrest there. We pray for, we pray for stability. We pray for um, uh, um, stable government in that country. We pray for the end of violence and gang, gang warfare in that, in that country. So, Lord, we pray. And we pray in all these situations, Lord, that you will protect the vulnerable and the weak, the children, those, Lord, who are, who, are, who, who, who are the innocent in all this. We pray for your protection for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for Muslims as they celebrate their time of Ramadan. We pray for Muslims everywhere, especially those in our own community, but all over the world. That, Lord, that you will reveal yourself to them in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. The risen Christ will, will be seen in their eyes. Lord, we pray, take the, take the scales from their eyes, we pray, so that they can see the truth in Jesus Christ, that as they seek as they seek their spiritual, to get spiritually deeper into their faith, that they will be, they will be, they will see Jesus, the resurrected Christ, as their Lord and Savior. As the Lord, we pray for Muslims. Reveal yourself to them, so that they will see the truth in our Lord, and turn in faith and worship like Thomas, saying, "My Lord and my God." 
We pray this for all Muslims everywhere today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, for those in our own community, those who are sick, those who are suffering in any way. We ask for your blessing upon them. We pray for Doreen, our sister Doreen, and the, all the different medical needs that she's had. We pray, Lord, that you will sustain her and strengthen her. And we thank you, Lord, that you know, for all the care and support she's been receiving from the, from the doctors and those who care for her. We pray that you will continue to sustain her physically and emotionally, and indeed spiritually. We pray for Jean and Walter and Monica, for Sue, for Daisy, for Ivy, for, for, for Keith. We pray for Veronica and Chester, for Dolly and Desmond, for Jean, for Joanna, for Pat and Ray, for Pauline and Pauline, for Muriel and David, for Syria Kala, and Monica, and Veronica and Cheryl, for Charity, Pippa, for Duke, for Pauline, for our Archdeacon Elwin, for Andy and Anita, for Una, Noel, Jackie, Maxine, Atlee, Anne and Richard, Elliot, Jake, Kiana, and Lucy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his all-sufficient grace. 
to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, in all your going and coming. May the Lord be with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.